a victorious Sunday morning. Did you catch the game last night? If not, we have highlights for you. Or if you just want to see it again, we'll have more on all that a bit later. But first, President Obama will deliver the commencement address at ASU's graduation in just a couple weeks. And organizers expect the audience to be his biggest since Inauguration Day. Thousands of people are showing their pride and patriotism this weekend in Apache Junction. It's host to a nearly full-scale replica of the Vietnam Memorial traveling the country. For years, the focal point has been soldiers lost in Vietnam. Now, as Rick DeBrule reports, more families are seeking comfort after losing loved ones in Iraq and Afghanistan. About 30 homeowners facing foreclosure or already in foreclosure gathered at a pizza restaurant near Dobson High to listen to what President Obama had to say. Some traveled all the way from Tucson. They're all part of Acorn Housing and most walked away feeling very hopeful. AAA is set to release its holiday travel forecast this week, but according to the drivers we spoke with, if prices stay like this, they will definitely be heading out of town. It's almost like the rain came on cue. I have had the umbrella handy all day. We've been driving all over the valley, seeing the ominous clouds, but not seeing too much rainfall. Sheriff Arpaio also said that if his actions provoke racism, then demonstrators should focus their attention on lawmakers rather than the agencies and officials who are sworn to uphold the laws. Lights, camera, action. Thousands of media from all over the world are in Tampa Bay, Florida right now. Fashionistas, for the most part, were pleasantly surprised with Michelle's choices, saying they were very appropriate, sending the right message to the country. The Arizona Republic's fashion editor editor says the first lady's look is more than just about style. It sets a tone. Conditions have gotten a lot better throughout the day. Snow plows have been working to clear the roads and I actually just got off the phone with DPS and they say most highways are now open except for the 180 which is closed indefinitely. But they're warning all drivers heading up north to be prepared. Tough decisions face the mayor and council members now. They have to fill out these rating sheets by their next meeting at the end of the month to determine which programs should be cut. Both sides are hoping that as many teachers Teachers' jobs can be saved as possible, but again, Democrats say it's better they have time to start preparing for the worst, and they will have that chance as the legislature again voted today. Hey, so what's up? she just wants oh, to give you a kiss, okay. is all. <laughs> so should I give her my cheek, or she will? She actually kisses the lips. Oh, oh well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not on the first day, Antoinette. I can't do that. Are you guys making any predictions, Coop? I know that you were saying in the past that your dog was picking the winner. Well, with the NBA comes celebrities, of course. And for some, like rapper Jay-Z, Beyonce, and LeBron James, having the glamorous life is also about giving back to the community. As Andy Harvey reports, one Mesa school and Boys and Girls Club got a big gift all thanks to the trio. During the Bracero program, the U.S. took 10% from the workers' paychecks and sent it to Mexico. But the Braceros never saw it again. Most didn't even know this money was owed to them until a class action lawsuit was filed on their behalf eight years ago. In October, the Mexican government finally agreed on a settlement to return $3,500 to each Bracero. A long wait at the Mexican consulate today, but, La original, ¿dónde está? but after as many as seven decades, it's worth it. ex Braceros looking to finally get the fruits of the labor they reaped years ago when they first arrived in the U.S. to work in the fields. We had to work a lot, and I didn't get paid hardly anything, only 75 cents an hour. Minus 10 percent, money they now hope they'll get to see before they die. But others weren't so lucky. Ernestina Garcia's father already passed away, never knowing there was a chance his family would one day be eligible for the money he worked so hard for. I think he will be happy. <laughs> He'll be happy that he worked so hard in those years. A big help to his loved ones now, especially in a struggling economy. ex Braceros and their families hoping they have the documents they need. Documents that tell the tale of many young men who left their country to earn a living. Now hoping that country serves them justice. If I get the money, all this work is worth it. We'll see what happens. Hoping their work of digging up the past finally pays off. And the documents will now be sent to Mexico, where they will be processed in order of age and number of years worked. It could be two or three more years until they finally receive the money. Let's go, gentlemen. Keep walking. Let's go. 220 undocumented immigrants marching to Tenth City to complete their sentences, serving time for crimes ranging from drugs and DUI to burglary and theft. The inmates complaining they were forced to go there, many calling the sheriff racist. He's like Hitler, says Fidel Sanchez. He's truly a racist. Just like him, the only thing he's missing is the Nazi sign. Has to go! 
Protesters liken Tent City to a concentration camp. So this is similar to that. This is the type of attack that our community is going through. The ACLU argues the sheriff's actions could be unconstitutional. So he has a long, long history of completely disregarding the constitutional rights of, of all of his his inmates and on all the prisoners. So it wouldn't surprise me if this case would be any different. But Sheriff Arpaio says the undocumented prisoners aren't treated any differently and come from many different countries. We have those from Vietnam, Panama, Africa, South Korea, Jamaica, Argentina. Maybe there's one or two, but the, if you take a look around, it's all, Amer it's all Mexicans. Sheriff Arpaio says the move has nothing to do with discrimination and everything to do with efficiency and saving the county money by having the undocumented inmates all in one place. Opponents say their fight isn't going to end here. Supervisor Mary Rose Wilcox says they will be writing to President Obama and the Department of Justice asking them to review the sheriff's actions and put a stop to his ability to enforce immigration laws. For now, reporting live from Tent City, Melissa Gonzalo, 12 News. Michelle Bear and her husband Sterling have been married 28 years. Marriage is a gift much greater than just a legal arrangement between two people. The Bears have six children. Michelle says it's because of them and future generations of Arizonans that she's supporting Proposition 102, the Marriage Protection Amendment. It adds 20 words to Arizona's Constitution. Only a union of one man and one woman shall be valid or recognized as a marriage in this state. Then no judges or politicians can take away this gift of marriage from the vote of the people. Voters in California also trying to amend their constitution after the Supreme Court overturned a ban on same-sex marriage, making it possible for Phoenix couple Brad Birchie and Juan Sanchez to fulfill their wish of getting married. Brad also the father of five children, previously married to a woman. It was never important to me before until I met Juan. Wow. That was Paris. Reliving their honeymoon memories, Brad and Juan say their marriage is no different than anyone else's. Why should we be denied? be denied the right to be married. We are not against anyone. We are for marriage. In 2006, Arizona voters defeated a proposition that would have denied benefits to unmarried couples. The second time, there's not much wiggle room. One man and one woman. You really can't maneuver around that one too much. A simply worded proposition for voters deciding on a complex emotional issue. Melissa Gonzalo, 12 News.